Hello and welcome to a new series of Engines and Unfinished Business. Is it a new series because you haven't got two? It's not a new series. Episode. That's what I did before, wasn't it? Oh yeah, series one, episode one, part one. Blimey. Yeah. Not, I'm not very good at this whole camera shit, if I'm honest. Um, you may remember from the last episode that I thought my tea tasted funny. And it did, so I gave up on drinking the tea. Continuing on from last week's episode, when we were talking about oil pressure. Well, I was going to talk about which way around we sit. Oh, yes. We're right or wrong. It's this way. You mean I was right all along? No, you thought it was... Hey, oh, no, because I'm on the right! Oh, uh, I get it. Although, stage right. Because to them, you're on the left. I don't care about them. <laughs> <laughs> so, we continue with project Please Let There Be Oil Pressure. I'm going to try and remove the stock oil pressure sensor and then maybe just run the engine and see if oil suits out or get a pressure testing kit. Um, the reason I say try is because I don't actually know where it is. It seems to be differing opinions. I think it changed throughout engine revisions. It's somewhere in this area, apparently. So. I think I see something down this side, so I'm going to try and remove that and see what I can find out. It would really suck if it turns out this isn't actually the oil pressure one at all. Right, so that's all that stuff out of the way. Let's just pop this doodle off. There we go. Just a single connection uh, through the engine block. Let's see what that is. This is the piece in question. Hey. Let's hope they didn't just round the bolt. No, it feels like it's going. That's where I find out this is not an oil pressure sensor at all. If it is an oil pressure sensor, it certainly hasn't seen oil for a while. But that looks more cooling system to me. Maybe a, a secondary temperature sensor? Because I'm sure there's some there's one around the front as well. Uh, yep. This is definitely wrong much smaller thread but you can see like how before I undid it they look fairly similar so keep hunting. It's all learning isn't it? Oh, you know, So I tell myself so I don't cry myself to sleep at night. So after that running with the imposter I think I found the real deal. He is hiding just there. That looks like the badger. So to get to that is going to be either removing this whole coolant tree thing, whatever you want to call it, or the intake, or both. So working on the possibly foolish assumption that it's just held in by these four bolts, I'm going to whip off the throttle body, partly because it gives me an excuse to try out my new toy. This thing is awesome. Oh no, little stubby can't get in there. I can't believe I'm going to have to undo this last one manually. What is this, the Middle Ages? Oh god. Manual labour. That's all the bolts out. Is it just being held in by whatever this is, this gasket? Or is there something more sinister afoot? Well, for a start, let's disconnect the throttle cable. Oh wow. I need a new throttle cable. That thing is frayed AF, as the kids say. So, not something to deal with. There we go. Percussive maintenance always works. This definitely feels like going backwards, having, you know, put all this stuff together, some of it quite a while ago. Undoing it just doesn't feel great. But, you know what would feel worse? starting the engine and discovering it had no oil and turning it into a lump of useless metal. So, we continue. This is what I think is actually the oil pressure line. Looks like the right thing. Looks like the right size thread. Looks like it's caked in crap. Um, might be a challenge to get a socket on that. According to this inaccurate thing, it's a 26. Pretty sure I 
don't have that in any sockets or spanners. Looks like I need a bigger spanner. Perfect. Nothing beats homegrown. Ah, oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> it doesn't clear. It needs to be a, a thin walled socket. I have to unbolt this fuel line just to get to this one. Oh, bloody hell. There we go. Right. So at least I know it's possible. I now have access to get a socket. It's still going to be fairly thin walled to clear that gap there. But I will either grow or order a new socket for there and return. Let's see if it fits. Ah, oh, would you look at that? It's almost as if I've already tried this. The final question, is it in fact the oil pressure sensor? Place bets now. Alright. Well, it's certainly an oil something. So based on the location of this, I don't want to just run the engine and see if oil comes out because it's so just splooging on everything. So I'm going to go and get an oil pressure test kit. Right, got me an oil pressure tester kit. I chose this one partly because it sat in that sweet spot between so cheap there's no way it can work well and too expensive for something I'll only use a couple of times. Partly because it's not made in China, but mostly because it has a funny name. So here's the stock oil pressure sensor. Hopefully one of these matches the thread and the size. Maybe that one looks about right. Feels about right. Let's see if that goes in. Yep. A bit hard to get started, but it goes in nicely. Some of these adapters have O-rings on them. Some of them, like the one I'm going to be using, don't. I can only assume that's because this is a tapered thread, so it's self-sealing. So it will never go all the way to the end where you'd have an O-ring seat, whereas this one, whatever it is, seats right up flush, therefore needs the O-ring. Hope that's right anyway. All right, let's see what happens. That's a new noise. Oh, idiot. I left the fucking spark plug things in. Let's try again. Well, that is bad news. I didn't see any movement at all. So at this point, there are two possibilities. First, oil pump doesn't work. Hopefully not that. Secondly, it's just not primed, it's not moving any oil. I've taken out the oil filter and, much to my surprise, it looks like I didn't prime it when I put it in. Normally I would. So I'm hoping if I fill that with oil and reattach it, some of that oil will end up back in the oil filter and help it prime. It's worth a shot. Now of course, as the oil level is already slightly around the maximum, what I will have to do is pull some oil out, but one problem at a time. This is going to be a bitch to get in, because it has to go upside down. Guessing I didn't bother to prime it because I knew I was going to be changing the sump. Still nothing. My next plan to get the oil pump to prime was to cobble together this funnel and pour some oil directly into the oil pump through the oil filter housing. Yes! <laughs> and then to satisfy my own curiosity, I put the stock oil pressure sensor back in and cranked the engine to see if the starter motor could generate enough pressure to turn the warning light out on the dashboard. <laughs> Turns out it can. Good to know. So lessons learned from that experience was that the dashboard light will go out just by cranking it on the starter motor, so I didn't need to go out and buy that oil pressure gauge thing. But on the plus side, it helps to know exactly what the oil pressure is doing and I'll probably use it again at some point in the future. So I'm okay with it. Good. Any, did I do anything else? I don't remember. No. It's been so long since I filmed all this crap, but something happened. 
Yep. And um, that's it. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, what yeah. are you doing next? Next, I'm actually going to try and start the engine. So, still no coolant. I'm, I'm going to be there for that. In case it explodes. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, drain the old fuel, get new fuel in, replace spark plugs, put everything in, and turn the key and see how much it explodes. Yeah. We want just the right amount of explosion because no explosion means the engine isn't working and too much explosion means that like everything disappears. So just, just the right level of exploding is what we're aiming yeah. for here. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Tuning next time when we will be exploding a car. <laughs> Thank a you for watching. Good night. Bye bye. Bye.